I want to introduce Sarah and Chris, and they're going to talk to us about avalanches today. Uh, my name's Sarah, and I'm a backcountry and heli ski guide here in the valley. So I get to be playing out in the mountains. I also do avalanche presentations with the Sawtooth National Forest Avalanche Center. And that's who I'm here with today. This is Chris Lundy, who is one of the lead forecasters at the Avalanche Center. Let me just give you guys an idea of how the day is going to go, or the hour anyway. We're going to start out with a 20-minute video. It's a really cool video. Then we'll do a 20-minute presentation that takes some of the ideas from the video and puts it in perspective for you guys why the, these avalanche phenomena are important for us to understand here in the Wood River Valley. Then at the end of the presentation, we'll have 10 minutes to um, do a question-answer section with Chris. You know, this came over my head and I just felt it like kind of like push me down. And uh, but then I came around and I was still up and I was like swam, swam, swam. And then it just slid way down and just like they said, you know, full concrete. Luckily my head was out and I was breathing. It could have been worse though. It could have been a much deeper avalanche and, and I was super lucky. The equipment just keeps getting better and better. The snowmobiles, skis, snowboards, snowshoes, climbing equipment, and it's allowing more and more people to get farther and farther into the backcountry. It seems like every five years there's twice as many people in the backcountry. People keep getting into bigger and steeper avalanche terrain all the time. My biggest thing is I think if you want to get out there and do this kind of stuff and be in the backcountry, you need to have the knowledge and the equipment to do so. And don't overstep your boundaries. If you feel like you're pushing it too far, then you probably are. Okay, so this presentation, guys, is called Know Before You Go. This program was originally started in Utah, but we've brought it here to the Wood River Valley because we think it really is important for you guys to know a little bit about avalanches. Um, so with the worksheets, I didn't want to give you guys homework, but Mr. Goikachia said, oh, they have to have homework. No, I'm just teasing. But the cool thing about this homework is that um, all but one of the questions can be answered today if you pay attention to the presentation. Today, during this presentation, we are going to explore what is an avalanche, why are they dangerous, where do they happen, and what you can do about it. Aha! So when you see this light bulb pop up on the screen, it's important information, and it's a clue that that's an answer to something on your homework. When you see the light bulb, you can say, aha, let's try it. Aha! Ah, nice, okay. Yeah, you guys are getting it. Okay, here we go. So what do you need to have an avalanche? It's pretty simple. You need a steep slope. You need an unstable snowpack. And you need a trigger. Nice. Okay, so in order to understand why avalanches are really dangerous, I want you guys to imagine being in one. You're walking or skiing across this slope, and all of a sudden, the snow beneath you shatters like a pane of glass. You probably hear a big boom. The snow breaks up into huge chunks. They're like the size of refrigerators or bigger and as heavy as a refrigerator. And now suddenly, you're mixed in with those big chunks of refrigerator. The chunks of snow with you tumbling around in them start moving down the slope really quickly. Within seconds, you could be moving over 60 miles an hour. Next time you guys are driving somewhere, peek over at the speedometer, and when it hits 60, imagine jumping out of the car right then. That's what it could be like to be in an avalanche. Has anybody here been in a dog pile? Raise your hand. Have you ever been at the bottom of the dog pile with like 10 or 12 people on top of you, and you can barely breathe, and it starts to feel kind of claustrophobic, and that's what it's like to be buried in debris, except it's your whole body and you have snow in your mouth and in your nose and no fun at all. One good thing about this graph is that it shows us that if you can be um, recovered from the debris, if you can be dug out from the debris, within the first 15 minutes, 9 out of 10 people survive. So 90, 
Two person. Oh, you guys are ahead of me. Nice, nice, nice. Perfect. Anybody recognize this? This is Woodside Elementary School. And there's an avalanche right there by it. So what I'm hoping that you guys are starting to realize is that avalanches happen where we live and play. They happen all around us. You guys starting to get that picture? You always want to be prepared because you never know when things might go awry. How about one more time? avalanche train. Make sure you carry the appropriate rescue gear, a sh uh, transceiver, shovel, and probe. And more importantly, you know how to use it. Practice with it. Know what you're doing. I wanted to show you guys the avalanche equipment, uh, rescue equipment, up close and in person. There are lots of different beacons. They all um, are pretty similar. This is what a beacon looks like. You wear it like so. It sends out a signal, and then you can use the same beacon just by flipping a switch to pick up that signal in case you're searching for someone. An avalanche probe looks like this. It's a little bit tricky to set up, but once you practice a couple times with it, you see that it's really not so bad. You use this to probe into the snow to find exactly where that person is. And an avalanche shovel usually breaks down into couple of pieces so that it can be stored in your pack and goes together really quickly. Once you probe the person, then you dig them out quickly within 15 minutes and save them from suffocation. Okay, thank you guys so much. Let's now turn things over to Chris Lundy. Have you guys been thinking of some good questions? Yes. Yes? Uh, nobody, fortunately. I've only been involved with one avalanche accident, and uh, it wasn't somebody in my group, actually. I just happened upon it. And uh, some snow, a snowmobiler got buried in an avalanche, and uh, it was a very unfortunate situation because he didn't have the rescue gear, right? The avalanche transceiver and uh, the shovel and the probe. And it was just like the picture that Sarah showed. I showed up, and there was football fields full of avalanche debris, and this guy was buried, and we had no idea where he was. And it was a very helpless feeling, and unfortunately, he died. Oh, right here. Uh, no. Once you're buried, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You're going to be set up like concrete. You won't even be able to wiggle a finger. So uh, the only thing you can really do is try to relax. You know, the longer you relax, the less oxygen you'll use up and the longer you might survive. But really, once you're buried, it's all up to your partners to get you out. Yes. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. How can you stay on top if you're caught in an avalanche? And uh, avalanches are a lot like kind of being in a river. Has anybody sw uh, swam in like a fast moving river? Yeah, it's kind of like what an avalanche is like. If you were to, uh, would you want to jump in a river with your skis on? No. No, so it's nice to have your skis come off. That's going to help you out a lot. If your skis are on your feet, you're going to get tossed and turned and you'll have, you know, hardly any control. Yeah, if you're on a snowboard, a snowboard isn't going to come off, so that's going to be kind of like an anchor. But, uh, you know, you want to get rid of your gear, and uh, if possible, you know, swim. Try to fight to stay on top, you know. Do uh, swimming strokes, and it might help you stay on top. And then uh, the very best thing you could do is once you start to feel that avalanche slow, uh, try to make an air pocket for yourself. You know, put your hands by your mouth, and then try to get one hand to the surface, and maybe that hand will stick up out of the snow and somebody will find you that way. Thank you guys very much.